Hey guys, Jennifer LeClaire here with you. We are in Pigeon Forge, uh, Tennessee. I'm here with Ryan Lestrange. We're simulcasting our uh, teaching today on Facebook Live, both of our pages, to get maximum benefit. We really want to reach as many people as possible with this revelation. I want to wait for a few people to get on. Let us know where you're watching from. I'm telling you, in this season, we've seen spiritual warfare ramp up against so many people. I'm getting emails. I know Apostle Ryan is getting emails, uh, uh, messages on on Facebook. Hello, uh, Prophet Jamela, good to see you. Uh, Christina McKinney, good to see you on the line. Emily uh, Fairley. We're going to blow the top off a strategy of the enemy uh, in this broadcast. So go ahead and share this with as many of your friends as you can. Share, share, share. Hello, Penny King. Share because this is going to set some people free this morning. Yeah, you know, I think this is one of the things like so many people. Uh, underestimate spiritual warfare because they think like, well, it's just really no big deal. And I was reading this one in 1 John 3 and verse 8, which is a scripture you probably all know, but I think it's a foundational warfare scripture. Memphis in the house, I see you. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, we'd like to greet you and, and call out some of the different areas and territories. Uh, if you're on uh, Apostle Jennifer LeClaire's page, hello. You're on my page down here, hello. Tamara uh, McNair Hicks, good to see you. And uh, anyways, First John 3, 8, I want to read that. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. And then this is the part I want you to focus on. For this purpose, in other words, this is one of the real primary intents of Jesus coming. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So really he's talking about the systems, the schemes, the strategies of the devil. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested to destroy the works, all the different kinds of works of the devil. And so, you know, sometimes people just feel like, well, I'm just under attack and it's just random. I've heard people say, well, the devil's just stupid. The devil doesn't know what he's talking about. But demons have studied human beings for hundreds and hundreds and even thousands of years. And it's not a random thing. So when you're under warfare, there's actually strategy behind Satan's warfare against you. And that's why you've got to understand part of the assignment of Jesus in the ecclesia is to literally tear down and destroy these demonic structures. And what we're talking about this morning is one of the ways the enemy fights you through this spiritual tag teaming. So that's where we're going. I see California in the house. I think I saw Canada, Australia. I don't know where else, but welcome everybody. Good to see you. It's good. It's going to be good. You know, many of you have watched, remember, I, I don't know, uh, I'm probably aging myself, but in the 70s, wrestling was really popular. Mm -hmm. You had like the masked assassins and the different ones, and they would tag team. And this is what spirits do. They tag team against you. It's like as soon as a one gets done harassing you, it's like they pass the baton to another, and sometimes they gang up on you at the same time. You know, in the spiritual warfare that I face, I've realized and understood that many times it's not just one spirit that's attacking me. They, they come uh, almost like a confederate. They come as, like, as you call them, foot soldiers in an army. And how many of you know foot soldiers don't walk alone? There's always a, a unit. They, they advance together. And so the reason why I think sometimes, uh, you know, the Bible says, uh, submit yourself to God, resist the devil and he'll flee. I know many times when I'm in warfare, I'm resisting. I'm submitted. I'm doing what the Bible says. I've repented. I've looked for the open doors. And it's like the devil's not fleeing. Why? I think the reason why is because sometimes when they tag team, this devil will flee. But this devil over here is there to back it up, to step in line as the next foot soldier to come against you. And I've seen this with Jezebel and Python. I've seen it with Jezebel and witchcraft. I've seen it with Jezebel and religion. Uh, and I've seen it with fear. As we were talking about last night, fear, almost any battle that you fight, almost any trial that you face, fear will always accompany uh, almost always. I've never faced a battle where fear did not accompany whatever other spirit was attacking me. Mm -hmm. It's always it's always working together. And that's one of the, that's really a spiritual principle because like even in the gifts of the spirit, uh, a lot of times people say, well, was that a word of knowledge? Was that prophecy? You know, they function and flow together and, and Satan masks a lot of times the realm of the kingdom. And uh, I did a teaching recently about Satan's counterfeit government. I don't want to take a, a terribly 
long amount of time. But, you know, I believe in Ephesians where we see the fivefold ministry, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Uh, I believe there's a counterfeit version of that. And in spiritual warfare, as we engage uh, spiritual warfare individually and corporately, we need to realize that because they do tag team. And so a lot of times when I'm describing different kinds of spirits, somebody will say, well, wait a minute, that Jezebel attack has heaviness and a python attack has heaviness because there's commonality. It's like if you get a word of knowledge or you get a prophetic word, you're going to feel edified most of the time. Why? Because there's commonality there. And so Satan has an organized kingdom and these different spiritual beings or entities will work together. So just to break this down quickly, in the fivefold ministry, you have apostles. They're generals. They govern. They establish. They build. They lead. They guide. We could say a lot more, but those would be just quick, rapid-fire traits. Prophets. They see. They hear. They know. They reveal. Again, I'm giving rapid-fire traits. Teachers. They explain. They instruct. They equip. They renew through the Word of God. Pastors. They feed. They care. They tend to the needs of the sheep. Evangelists. I call them the burning ones. Uh, they're the sent ones. Sent with supernatural power. Evangelists literally have supernatural power. They don't just say something. They actually demonstrate something. So then Ephesians 6.12 says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against human beings, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. There's four operations there. And I really just kind of summarize and add a fifth one and say there's these little low-level foot soldier demons. Like if you're dealing with a headache demon, if, for, if you're going through it personally, it's real to you. And that headache demon that's creating a headache in your physical body also then starts working on your faith because your mind starts to wonder, well, why can't I get the victory? And now you've got a spirit of doubt partnering with the spirit of infirmity. And so these things tag team together, literally. So principalities, I believe this is the highest ranking demon. It, it mirrors the apostolic. If God wants to shake a generation, if God wants to shake a nation, if God wants to shake a people group, he's going to send an apostle. Well, if Satan wants to do it, he's going to send and already really has sent and established over people and territories and regions, principalities. You know, some cultures have a principality just ruling over that entire culture. Uh, you know, people that come from certain parts of the world, they can be living in a whole nother area, but you see common traits within the culture in another nation that originated back at a central location. That's a principality operation. And then you got a power. That's the second ranking uh, type of spirit that, that mirrors the prophet. What does the prophet do? It moves, he, he or she really moves in supernatural decree, supernatural declaration. Uh, there's realms of prophetic, like we see with Elijah and Elisha, they had supernatural power. So there, there are demons that literally release supernatural power. The principality is trying to get everybody in confusion, and then the power comes in and starts manifesting false signs, false wonders, and gets everybody into confusion. The power brings supernatural realms alive. And then you've got the ruler of darkness. I believe this is the root of false religion. This is the root of a cult. This is the root of deception. These, these rulers of darkness sow seeds of deception, kind of mirroring the teacher. And then you've got spiritual wickedness. Uh, you've got the spiritual uh, wickedness that really releases depravity, uh, that dwells in the high places, in the airspace above the earth, kind of uh, mirroring the evangelist, uh, bringing a supernatural decree. And then I just say the little foot soldier demons, just like the pastor is very sheep-minded and the pastors amongst the sheep, amongst the people. These little foot soldier demons, we all deal with foot soldier demons. Sometimes we're not dealing with the principality personally. You know, we just have a headache that won't go away and now we're kind of upset. Why isn't my faith working? That's a little foot soldier demon. Hey, it's good to see Sweden in the house on my page. That's a little foot soldier demon, but oftentimes that little foot soldier demon is working alongside of a principality, working alongside of a power. And so in spiritual warfare in dismantling the systems and the structures of Satan, we've got to recognize these demons partner up. You know, it's kind of like cockroaches or rats. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, we moved a number of years ago into a home that was in a very rural area, and we began to have rodent issues uh, in our basement. That's a horrible thing. And, you know, we found out if you see one, there's others you can't see. And that's how the demonic realm really works. Wow, <laughs> that's really good.
That's really good. And I believe that principalities release powers. I believe in the yeah. hierarchy, a principality releases a power. Like, for example, Jezebel releases witchcraft. Python releases witchcraft. Uh, the religious spirit releases witchcraft. It's a different expression or a different kind of witchcraft. But, you know, Apostle Ryan, when you were talking about that, I, I got this, 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 this inkling uh, of, of a different way to look at these spirits. Mm. It's almost like some spirits, they're, they're, it's like a false apostolic. They're, they're, fa they're, they're, mm. they're sent ones. They're, they're some spirits that they're, they're sent ones. Satan sends them. There's some spirits. They're almost like prophetic. They're like mm -hmm. prophetic spirits, like a familiar spirit or a spirit of divination. These prophets come to prophesy falsely. To, I mean, these demons come to prophesy to you falsely. They prophesy to you through vain imaginations. They prophesy to you through other uh, uh, people that are flowing in divination. There are some demon powers that will come uh, almost like a pastor with a pastoral wow. function to comfort you. It's like a false comfort. These They come to try to cause you to make inner vows. These pastors oral demons. They're like a false comfort, like a false shepherding, like a false protection. Then there's these demon powers that come to teach you. It's like a spirit of yes, error. Yes. These demon powers come with this false teaching, this error, this like the hyper grace message. That's a false doctrine. They come with doctrines of error, doctrines of demons. It's like a teaching demon. And these evangelistic demons, they come <coughs> to, to, to bring a false gospel. Uh, like communism is a false gospel. Uh, other other uh, religions that are false religions, there, there's these demon powers that are propagating this false gospel this false evangelistic spirit, this demon power. And so we have to be very careful that we're thinking about what we're thinking about, that we're very cognizant that the enemy does. We all know this. We know it, that the enemy comes to work against our minds, that he comes to bring the battle to our minds, to bring deception to our minds. So we must think about what we're thinking about, begin to identify that demon. But what happens with is is in the realm of the mind, uh, this, this, this witchcraft is, I know I talk about witchcraft a lot, but that's because it's attacking a lot. Every demon power has the same essential agenda. It's found in John 10, 10, to steal, kill, and destroy. It's just how they go about stealing, how they go about killing, how they go about destroying. A python spirit always attacks you as you as you go into enter into prayer. The python spirit wants to steal your prayer life, mm -hmm. steal your worship life. It'll squeeze the life out of you. A Jezebel spirit will lead you into seduction, into immorality, into idolatry. A religious spirit will lead you into bondage, to false works, to all these sorts of things. So it's the expression or the agenda or the modus operandi, how the spirit accomplishes its agenda. Example, a fear spirit will always uh, try to terrorize you, try to keep you from moving forward because of fear. A rejection spirit will try to identify or attack your identity in Christ. And so we have to understand that there is a, a counterfeit fivefold. There is a, 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 a sort of opposing uh, expression uh, that tries to parallel what God is doing. And you know, last night you were talking about power prophets. Mm -hmm. And as you said that last night, the Lord showed me a new power dimension falling, not only on all the fivefold, but on the believer. He doesn't want just power of evangelists or power of prophets. He wants power apostles and power teachers. He, the Lord in this season wants uh, the, the entire fivefold and every believer to be operating in a dimension of Holy Spirit power because it's the Holy Spirit power that's going to counter the demonic powers. Uh, we have to rise up in the power of the Holy Spirit, that doomist power, the dynamite power to explode uh, the power that are coming against us. That's what it takes, that sensitivity to the Lord to discern what it is that's coming against you. As you've heard me say before, if you're swinging uh, the wrong sword, or if you're fighting the wrong battle, if you're picking, if you're calling out the wrong spirit, you're picking a fight with a demon that's not even short, sort of targeting mm -hmm. you. And that's where you begin to get that confederate of spirits that are tag teaming against you. Mm -hmm. and, and I think individually, you know, many of you right now, you're facing things. It's a tag team operation. So it's like, I know in in my own life when I've been attacked like for example there's been several times in our ministry we've been attacked by a Jezebel spirit I always tell people when because people attack you for preaching on the Jezebel spirit but I always tell people I never wanted to preach on the Jezebel spirit that wasn't in my mind I literally fought warfare from the Jezebel spirit but guess what when I began to fight warfare from the Jezebel spirit then all of a sudden I would have a spirit of doubt come in yeah, yeah. because I begin to doubt my call doubt my mandate doubt my assignment and so that's what these tag team spirits do. You are really never under attack from a singular spiritual dimension because spirits understand that they open up realms. In the, in the spirit, things operate in realms. So when we get into a healing realm, we also can get into a faith realm. We can get into a glory realm and we navigate in and out of those realms. When warfare happens, we're usually dealing with various facets or dimensions of warfare. And so on the personal level, like if 
you went through maybe sexual abuse. You've also probably dealing with trauma. You may be dealing with rejection. You may be dealing with fear. You know, all kinds of things. And in your own personal deliverance process, it, yes, you slammed the door shut. I was saying last night that in Nehemiah, I think it's chapter 4, that when Nehemiah began to apostolically close the breaches, that those the demons got angry. And in your personal life, so like deliverance often looks like this. You recognize something's going on. Now, sometimes for people, they might be in a meeting and they just start manifesting. They didn't even know they had a devil. They start manifesting. But there's a point of recognition. I know I was dealing with the spirit of rejection when I was younger. And I came to a point of recognition. And so then I began to cast that spirit out, bind that spirit, break that spirit, use my authority. But guess what? Even days, weeks, months, and years later, a little rejected thought would rise up. I would get my feelings hurt or something. And those thoughts would be gateways to begin to take me back into it. So I had to fortify my mind, Romans 12, with the word of God. And that's what Nehemiah was talking about, closing those breaches. So individually, these de demons tag team, and you need to pray in the Holy Spirit. You know, in, in Ephesians 6, the really famous warfare passage I read earlier about principalities, powers, if you read down, it, it says praying always. Prayer is one of the most critical things. We can just wage warfare from here like, well, I just know this is this, and I know this is this. And I tell people, get a spiritual education so you can discern things by knowledge, but you need to discern in the spirit realm too. And then you begin closing those breaches. Now, corporately, like in regional transformation, in transformation of a church, transformation of a people, uh, you know, I used to just think personally like, okay, I'm in this territory. There's a spirit of religion. I'm going to climb up on the chair and break it. Now, that's that is a part of it. You recognize it, you discern it, and there's different realms of authority. An apostle is going to go into a region and exercise an apostolic authority that can be a regional authority or even a national authority that can really help the process of shifting. But that apostle can get a breakthrough and then leave that territory. And if the people of the territory don't begin closing up the breach and renewing their mind, because as you were saying that, that principalities affect your thinking, then there's not going to be lack Lasting deliverance. So we want lasting deliverance in our life. We don't want just, I see this and I got free. And then a month later, two months later, we're back in the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cause then you're sometimes worse off than you were before you gain a measure of freedom and then you fall backwards and you're sometimes you're seven times worse or the devil bring, brings seven times more demons to attack you. Listen, here's the thing. If you continue scrolling down in Ephesians six, Paul revealed a secret warfare strategy. He said, pray in the spirit always. But then he says, and pray for me. Mm. and pray for me. Here's the thing. It doesn't matter if you're in full-time ministry or if you're just a full-time mom, if you're a full-time uh, 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 businessman, whatever it is you do, you have to have people around you who know how to pray. Because sometimes when there's a tag team uh, attack against you, you need a tag team defense to rise up. You know, wow. when they were persecuted in the book of Acts, John and James healed the men at the gate beautiful. They were sorely threatened. Uh, they were told, don't preach anymore in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says that they went back to their own company and they prayed. So they had backup. When Peter was put in prison, uh, he had backup. They were back at the house praying and an angel was dispatched uh, to release Peter from the jail. It poked him in his side, said, wake up, let's go. And Peter was released. This was because there were other people praying. So, you know, the Bible says that one puts a thousand to flight and two put 10,000 to flight. So there are certain battles that you have to, uh, to gain the authority, the revelation of the authority in you to overcome on your own. But there are certain battles that we must get a tag team approach in order order to, to get a speedier victory. I mean, why suffer longer than you have to? Humility asks for help. Some of you just need to just buckle down and say, you know what? Find two or three people you can trust and just admit, look, I'm going through hell. This is what's coming against my mm, mind. Help wow. me break it because humility, there's grace in humility. The Bible says he gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. So if you're going through a battle, you're going through a war and you're too proud to reach out for help, you're going to end up uh, sort of fighting longer than you would have to fight when if you just tag team against the devil you can break through a lot faster wow that is so powerful that is so powerful tag team on multiple levels the prayer of agreement find somebody to agree with you uh you know the praying in the spirit you're literally agreeing with holy spirit yeah. sometimes when i don't know what's the wall i'm up against uh i pray in the spirit because he'll begin to reveal and then the angelic realm can come in and assist you you know guys i would you please share this video yeah. i believe it will help people i believe it will bless people and also i would encourage you 
you. I don't know if you guys know this, but you can actually subscribe on our Facebook pages that when we come on live, you get a notification. That's very important because a lot of you on my page will write to me and say, I missed the video. Yeah. Or they'll go on my personal Facebook. I don't ever stream live on my personal Facebook. I always stream live here. So please subscribe so that you'll get the notification. And also, we both have resources on these subjects now. I have a new book that's coming out in May that I'm writing about three spirits that I believe tag team a lot. I'm writing about the spirit of religion. I'm writing about the Jezebel spirit. And I'm writing about the Python spirit. And I'm coming at it from the point of anti-anointing spirits and how they three kind of work in tandem often. It's playing off this whole concept. And I know you just released a new book now on spiritual warfare. Yeah, the spiritual warfare battle plan. And it talks about 15 different spirits that are the, probably the, some of the most common that I've seen that try to destroy people's life. Leviathan, Jezebel's in there, but also trauma. Trauma is such a big deal. Everywhere we go, and you can get a sort of post-traumatic stress disorder from spiritual warfare sometimes. If you didn't sort of quite get the victory and you've been just you know waging war for long seasons, you could almost be traumatized by that. So those are on our websites, ryanlestrange.com, jenniferleclair.org. And we want to pray for you, but there's a there, there's a there's something coming down the pike we want to just tickle your ear a little bit, put a bug in your ear. We don't want to tickle your ears. We want to put a bug in your ear. There's going to be a mega announcement soon that we're going to be making jointly. So within the next week or two, just stay tuned. It's going to be a mega announcement. Many of you know that I made a mega announcement recently with the regard to a shift in ministry and resigning from Charisma Magazine. But the Lord has given me a media mantle and has given Apostle Ryan a media mantle. So we're going to be making a joint announcement that's going to be explosive and uh, you'll have an opportunity to uh, get involved in some of these things uh, that we're going to do. So I wanted to make you aware of that. Uh, anything else we need to announce? No, I just, I'm excited about that. You know, stay tuned. This is something we've been praying, asking God how to be more effective to reach nations. And we're really, really excited about this upcoming announcement. So again, stay tuned as Apostle Jennifer said. All right, so let's, let's, let us pray for you. We want to break some of these assignments. We know some of you are suffering right now. It's no joke. Spiritual warfare is real, praise God. So we're going to pray and break some of this stuff off you. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. We just we come to you, God, with an attitude of humility, with a heart of repentance. God, if we have allowed ourselves uh, to, to come up under an attack that you've called us to rise up and break, if we've grown uh, just spiritually weary in the battle, God, we're we're asking you to forgive us uh, for not doing what we know to do. Strengthen our hearts, God. Give us discernment and revelation on what it is that is coming against us because you've not called us to come under an attack, but you've called us to blast through it and rise above it in the name of Jesus. Now, we lift up every person under the sound of our voices right now. We plead the blood of Jesus over you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. We decree and we declare that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon, no weapon of infirmity, no weapon of calamity, no weapon of poverty, no weapon at all. Every single weapon, every single device of the enemy that is formed or, or being orchestrated against you, whatever tag team has been dispatched and released towards your life, we break the assignment now in Jesus' name. We say cease and desist, devil. We command your weapons to fall to the ground. They are not effective. We draw a bloodline round and about you. We thank you, Lord, that you always lead us into triumph in Christ Jesus. So, Father, lead and guide your people uh, toward uh, the battle line with the weapons that they need, with the strategy that they need. Uh, we break and bind the attack against your mind. All those tormenting thoughts, even thoughts of condemnation, we come against you. We say you are victorious. You are healed. You are whole. You are prosperous in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I just bind heaviness. I hear the Lord say many have been facing heaviness because you have been battle weary and many of you have even come to question what I spoke to you says the Lord I break that spirit of heaviness off your mind off your emotions and the authority of Jesus name and I just stir again the passion and the purpose and the assignment and the mandate of heaven over your life in the name of Jesus and I'm, I just see these chains but they're not demonic chains I literally see a network of chains coming together and the Holy Spirit is saying to me this is the hour and this is the season where there's been much war 
warfare against your alignment and your connection. But the Lord said it is that alignment that unlocks the assignment. And so, Father, I pray for a Holy Spirit GPS to be unlocked in people, that they begin to find where they fit, they begin to find those warriors that they can run with, that literally they can do tag team warfare with, tag team prophetic ministry with, tag team apostolic yes. ministry with. And I break the rejection. I hear the Lord say there have been some that have just retreated and said this has been so hard. I don't know who to trust. I'm just going to sit here by myself and love Jesus. Yes. And I just break that lie of isolation in the name of Jesus. I break that in the authority of Jesus name that you will not isolate yourself. That's the thing that happened to Elisha when he went in the cave. And I break that lie off of your mind and your emotions in the authority of Jesus name. And all trauma, as Apostle Jennifer LeClaire was saying, I break trauma off your life. I break the spirit of trauma in the authority of Jesus name. I break the emotions of trauma. And I just, Father, I release a wave of freedom over your people today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. I say be free. Be free. Hallelujah. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Listen, be sure you subscribe to our alerts. Be sure you stay tuned for the special announcement. We're going to do a, the final day of the uh, spiritual warfare gathering here in Pigeon Forge. It's been a blast. Uh, we'll be doing uh, much more in the days to come. So get ready, get ready, get ready. It's going to be good. We're signing off now. Bless you. Bye, everybody.